Hi folks, me again, second video for today. On my test bench, I'm having one of my Sinclair QL computers. Uh, this one here, equipped with a Sandy Super Q board mouse. That's the version three of the Super Q board. And uh, connected is the so-called uh, Sandy Super Mouse. And uh, as said in the previous video, I want to see and try how this machine copes with uh, QLE version 320 uh, loaded from QLSD. So let's uh, reset the machine and start the boot process. So uh, memory test of the operating system, splash screen, loading the drivers from the EEPROMs and we give F1 to start the boot process. So uh, QLE is loaded from the QLSD. This is the bootstrap boot file, uh, which after five seconds loads the main boot file. One can press a key to speed it up. And the boot file is some 40K of uh, Super basic, so it takes quite some seconds to load because the 68008 uh, needs to load the basic boot file and uh, tokenize it and uh, this takes quite some time. So here it, it is and it's looking for a configuration and then waits 10 seconds for you to choose some options. We will just wait this time and uh, let it continue. So first step is to bring good old QDOS or Minerva closer to SMSQE level. Load the QJump extended environment, which includes the latest version of the so-called pointer interface which hopefully has still support for the sandy super mouse so the machine is pretty slow so normally i use a qle on a, a pc with qpc2 as a virtual ql and uh, the boot process here takes uh, really some seconds i guess some uh, I can spot it on screen, 47 seconds was the count. You can see it here, 47 seconds. And from the total of 640k RAM, 52k stays available. And now uh, the big question is, is the mouse still supported? So, uh, yeah. I'm starting to move the mouse and I see nothing happens. So let's uh, call the jobs menu with the hotkey Alt J and hooray, the mouse pointer moves. But as said in my previous video, you need to do quite a distance to get the pointer moving. So this may be a mechanical or electronical issue with uh, my specific uh, Super Cube or Super Mouse, but at least it's working and still supported. So uh, yeah, that was quite interesting. I'm quite happy that uh, that pretty old 1987 hardware Super Q board, Super Mouse with the 1983-84 Sinclair QL is uh, with its 640k of RAM is able to uh, boot uh, QLE and uh, has enough memory to load some applications. So I start the uh, QTOP desk. The user interface. Uh, for QDOS and uh, see if the mouse is working there as well. Yeah, 
I need to make uh, miles, but it's working. It goes faster with the keyboard. And we see uh, shortly the system overview. So uh, latest device drivers, latest Minerva, standard QL hardware, uh, device drivers uh, loaded uh, are also listed. So pretty nice. Okay, before I close the video, I want to uh, give a short talk about uh, Sandy Super Q board hardware. So Sandy has a combination of Italian and UK operation first started with expansions for the QLs uh, such as the Sandy uh, 256 or 512K RAM expansion. Uh, it was with a piggyback port to have a 256 as a basic and on the piggyback another 256. It was a through connector RAM card which uh, fitted completely inside the QL and let you add uh, floppy disk controllers on the expansion port. They uh, were quite close to the Sinclair uh, CI CD. They had a company logo which was very similar to the well-known Sinclair logo and uh, they also invested some money into proper uh, packaging and uh, this uh, is the box where my first Super Q board came with. I no longer have the Super Q board unfortunately I sold it to uh, get the upgraded one with mouse and just kept the box. Talking of Sandy, uh, a bit later, uh, in 1986, they changed the logo to a more modern style. And uh, with my QL business, Kobo Electronic, I had quite some correspondence with them and entered the uh, 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 real business with Sandy, I got approved uh, distributor for Switzerland. Good. A bit deeper to the Super Q board story. The manual was also very nice. The first one, uh, silver uh, paper, glossy silver like uh, the original Sinclair. And uh, the first version of the Super Q board was quite close to the true con RAM. I showed you it had the same uh, large uh, controller chip and uh, both versions with this aluminium heatsink they tended to overheat uh, the QL systems and were not uh, really long term reliable in uh, Central Europe or uh, Southern Europe uh, temperature environments. A bit later they uh, changed a bit uh, the manuals to get them manufactured cheaper, no more silver paper, no more glossy and uh, some manuals like for the floppy disk drives were just uh, printed with dot matrix printers and uh, photocopied. Uh, the manual extensions for the so-called super mouse system was a uh, as a document which the user had to print out. So that was uh, in late 1986, beginning 1987, where they, when they did really the, the documentation for this upgrade. Yeah, the upgrade highly uh, relied on the QCHAM, QRAM, RAM-based utilities. So it was, uh, Sandy was a hardware manufacturer they uh, got all the software by license, like the drivers or the pointer environment package. So all they did was basically the hardware uh, development, manufacturing and uh, selling. So looking a bit closer to the Super Q board version 3, I have here one specific one, which I... Uh, prepared for uh, part disassembly. So it's again a piggyback solution like the first RAM pack they did. 
So it's in fact uh, a so-called TrueCon RAM card, which connected to the piggyback connector here, but the board design allowed them to make a real QL64 pin connector on that side and another expansion slot connector on this side and then sell this as a standalone product. So for them it was like uh, having two products out of one. So it was a standalone RAM expansion option to buy or together with the so-called uh, super disk interface resulting then the combination the super Q board. So I try to uh, remove it from the case. I'm filming with the iPhone so it's not that easy. Uh, everything with my two hands. So the plastic they used was the plastic uh, developed by Sinclair Research. This was uh, offered by Sinclair to uh, partners to uh, use them on their products. So when you were a partner you had no Sinclair logo here on the left side. So when they did the injection molding, let's say 500 pieces for you or 1000, you got them either without logo or you supplied your own logo and the tooling was uh, adjusted and Sandy decided for the plain one, no logo here. And the board uh, without the RAM expansion, it's in fact a standard QL disk interface, but not only the, the disk interface was there, also a parallel port for, uh, for example, for uh, printers. And it consisted of the floppy disk controller chip, which uh, was a Western Digital 1772 and um, a 16K, not sure 16 or 32K of ROM or EEPROM and uh, together this was the Super Q board and the mouse connector was here so you had to really buy the more expensive so-called Super Mouse system and then the tooling was again modified by hand and uh, a, a DE9 connector was soldered on the board. I have some more of them. This specific one here looks more or less the same, but the difference is that this is a one which has a, a solder bridge here, and this is the, f the purely uh, five volt version which uh, was used if you had a QL which had a, a, an expansion port a multi system, and this specific board is from a Sandy QXD640 personal computer, which based on the Sinclair QL motherboard and uh, really the Super Q board or Super Q board mouse, if one ordered that. Then I have uh, another one of those uh, Super Q board version 3. This is a one I got from a Swiss QL fellow uh, who is an electronic engineer and he highly modified most of his cards. So here he added some uh, uh, voltage stuff for his own need, but that one comes with a hand added uh, DE nine connectors so this is again a functional super q board mouse for use with the so-called super mouse so this uh, the, the sandy super q board version 3 either with mouse or without was at the time and we speak uh, uh, about early 1987 the most uh, famous ql expansion Talking about dates, I'm not sure we can spot it with the camera, try to use zoom. So the PCB design of the, the RAM part was done on February 1st, uh, 1987. And uh, the Super Q board itself, PCB design was done on February 25th, 1987. So really nice 
I used them for many months until I decided to buy a Miracle System trump card which offered some additional 256 kilobyte of RAM. So Sandy's QL business, as everyone's QL business, declined uh, sometimes in 1987, 1988, and they uh, decided to reposition the company. The company got then, the UK arm got called uh, Power Computing. They continued to do a QL business, so this is a box which uh, had a three and a half inch single disk drive for the QL. So that's just a bit of the Sandy story there. Was even more. There is the big Sandy Futura story, a real QL successor. And uh, you can search uh, the internet for it. And I have a video about it on YouTube of the last or only remaining Sandy Futura prototype. So I prepared here some goodies, like those are the writings on the PCBs of the Sandy Super Cube mouse and the Sandy Super Trucon RAM card. And uh, what I have here is my 13-year-old uh, Lenovo X61S PC, which has a pretty old uh, Core 2 Duo CPU and a 32-bit version of um, Windows 7. So I want to show you how QLE performs when you start it on a real fast machine. I don't call this a fast machine, it's 13 years old, but it's a nice Windows PC. Uh, it's running QLE with QPC2, SMSQE in high color mode with a lot of RAM and uh, yeah, it's the same SD card uh, used here. Every bit is the same and the boot process on this old Windows PC uh, took 11 seconds. So that's uh, more than four times faster on the QL and it loaded much, much more software. And running it on a real fast PC of uh, today, it boots in much less than 10 seconds. So the video became much longer than I expected, but I was in a mood to tell you some stories. And uh, it's a nice afternoon here, winter time in the Lake Valley retro labs. And uh, yeah, maybe I have uh, uh, the chance to do something else this afternoon, which would be more in the area of running uh, SMS2 on the Atari ST line. We'll see. Okay, that's it for the moment. Take care, stay healthy, all the best. Bye.